Good evening. Welcome to Signs of the Times' fourth year anniversary celebration. As a production of NCCI, Signs of the Times was conceived as another vehicle to provide knowledge of biblical and secular information, along with NCCI's Hebrew calendar. Signs of the Times is produced to give insight into the past, present, and the future of Yahweh's chosen people, the Hebrew Israelites. The nation of people are now, today, known as African Americans. We're very glad you were able to join us tonight in the celebration. We hope you will enjoy the events we have planned for you this evening. If you will, please open your programs to the order of events. First on our tour of NCCI's gallery exhibit, exhibit of pictorial information, I'm sorry. After the tour, you will be escorted back to our dining area where you will have prepared, where we, I'm sorry, where we have prepared our d'oeuvres for you. While you eat and drink, feel free to visit our information table in the front of the sanctuary and meet and greet some of the panelists of Signs of the Times. Then you will, you will be escorted back to the sanctuary to get ready for the highlight of the evening, the one-on-one -on -one with the elder priest of the New Covenant Congregation of Israel, Yaakov ben Israel, and the host of Signs of the Times, Daniel Israel. And now I'm going to turn this part of the program over to our tour guide for NCCI's Gallery of Pictorial Information Exhibit to Tamar Israel. all very much for coming out. Actually what we have on the board this evening is about four years worth of creative effort by a lot of the panelists that appear on Signs of the Times. We want you to start in this corner here. We'd like to take you on a worldwide tour actually of some of the information that we've shown on our program. So if you'll move towards this way. And Heidi if you will get behind this table of nations I'd like for them to see that. You can hold it up. I've got this. Of course, whenever you start with the scriptures, you really need to start with the sons of Adam and then the sons of Noah, because of course, after the flood, everything was wiped out except eight souls. So we want to share with you exactly what the table of nations are and how those three sons of Noah divided and populated the known earth at that time. We're not talking about the continent that we live on because we know that this is what's called the new world. So the nations that was on the earth after the flood was the seed of Japheth, the seed of Shem, and the seed of Ham. Now actually what's been told us all of our lives is that we are from this nation down here, the seed of Ham. But actually we are from the tribe of Shem through Abraham and these were your colored nations. These are your black nations. And of course, Yafet are your European nations, and they are also known as the Gentiles in scriptures. And you can find that in Genesis, the 10th chapter, verse 1 through about 5. So whenever the scriptures mention the word Gentile, that's exactly who it's talking about, the European races. Now again, we came from the lineage of Shem and not the lineage of Ham. And that really answers a lot of questions as far as why have not the African nations ever said, let my people come home? And remember, when the table of nations are gathered together, all of the nations on the earth are represented except the Negro. The Africans are represented and as a matter of fact, an African now leads the United Nations. The Europeans, of course, are the rulers of the earth today. And the Shemites, of course, still are represented in the table of nations, but not the so-called Negro. Now here you have some differences between the Africans and the Hebrew Israelites, or our people. You have Jesse Jackson. This was a picture taken from a Hebrew Bible where our people have dressed up in the ancient garbs 
And here you have a black man in the center of all of the institutions on the earth. You have health care, you have corporate America, you have senseless violence, the U.S. government, law enforcement, the legal system, and everyone is shooting and pointing toward the so-called Negro. They are out to destroy us just as they were when we were in the land of Ham. I'm getting tangled up here. Next you have your European races who have, I told you before on the Table of Nations that they were of the seed of Yafet. These are your Gentiles and of course you see several here. Now another nation that looks a lot like the Gentiles are the people that are claiming to be the Jews today. Here are some of them represented. Now these people we know came from Europe back in 1948 and was set up by Great Britain and the United States after the Hitler regime to take over the Holy Land. And prophetically, it was claimed that the Jews have fulfilled the prophecy of returning to Jerusalem. Now, these people keep none of the holy days that are written in the scriptures, and neither do they truly practice the way of the Jew. But they have become the imposters that Revelations, the, 20, the third chapter, talks about. It says, I know them who say that they are Jews, but are not, but are of the synagogue of Satan. Now, Revelations was written in the year 92 A.D. Christ died in the year 33 A.D. Sixty years after the death of Christ, in Revelations, we hear Christ telling John the, John the Revelator, I know them who say they are Jews or I'm not. That doesn't quite make sense if we're supposed to be Christians right now. Excuse me. Heidi, if you'll hold this one up. Now this board is a little tattered, but we thought it was well worth showing because it shares the difference between a black nation of people that lives in Ethiopia called the Falasha. Now these people claim to be Jews. They've practiced the religion of the Jews for 2,000 years since they came to that land after the death of Christ. They look very similar to you and I. However, the word Falasha in Ethiopia means alien resident. That means that they are not Africans. They are not treated like Africans. And in 1985, when Ethiopia was going through the famine, what happened was the Israeli government, Great Britain, and the United States took a cover-up operation to, to take these people out of Ethiopia because a lot of um, media attention was given to that land at that time. They removed these people and brought them to Israel, and then it leaked out in world press that there were black people claiming to be Jews and could not believe that there were, was such a thing as a white Jew. It was never heard of. So again, this proves that there are black people, our brothers and sisters, still living in the continent of Africa. When we were sold here, they remained there. They are not the same as the Zulus who live in South Africa. They are just like us. So we're all over Africa, still treated like second-class citizens. Now that we have a good idea of what the nations or who the nations are, are on the earth, we decided to share with you the last four world empires that the prophet Daniel and the prophet John the Revelator said would come upon the earth before Christ returns to set up a kingdom of peace and righteousness on the earth. Now this was a dream by King Nebuchadnezzar and he saw a great image of a man and this man, this kingdom, ruled the whole earth. The man was, the head of the man was the Babylonian Empire, which began ruling in 606 BC. The shoulders and arms of the man was the Medo-Persian Empire, and it started in 538 BC. After that came your Grecian Empire. It was represented on the man as the belly and the thighs of brass, and that was in 323 BC. And then finally, your Roman Empire which were your legs of iron, and feet, which was mixed with iron and clay. That began in 30 BC. Finally, and it's not on this picture, but you have the beast with seven heads, ten horns, and ten crowns. And it actually grew out of this Roman Empire, which are the toes and the legs. Heidi, if you will, if you could pick this up, hold it up pretty high so that they can see it. 
Now, what I just told you is depicted in a colored form here. You have the man, this great beast that would rule the whole earth that also was the beginning of the captivity of our people. In 606 BC, we were taken to Babylon and we remained there 70 years. We were brought back by the Medo-Persians who happened to be the first Europeans to rule the earth. This was in 539 BC. Before that, and we know we had almost 4,000 years of history, the black people and the colored races ruled the earth, the Africans and the Shemitic peoples. The Europeans did not begin their rule until 539 BC. Now today, the Medes are the Russians. The Persians are your Iranians today. The belly and thighs of brass was your Grecian Empire. You all may remember in what little history they taught us, Alexander the Great was that Greek head. Then of course you have your legs of iron. Now as you can see, this, this depiction is losing its value. It's losing its strength. And finally, the toes are mixed with clay. Now, we know what happens with clay once, it, once water hits it, correct? It starts to disseminate. And this is where we are today on this timetable. We are living on, in the, the time of the kings of the ten toes. Ten toes. Now, here in Daniel chapter 7, this is in Daniel chapter 2. Daniel also saw another image of the same beast, the last four world empires. The first one he saw was like a lion, and that was the Babylonian Empire. The next one he saw was like a bear, and that was your Medo-Persian Empire. The third one was like a leopard with four heads, and that was your Grecian Empire. And the reason it had was depicted as four heads, because Alexander the Great in 321 AD, I'm sorry, BC, when he became conqueror of the known earth, he died about 12 years later. And his four generals divided the known earth and they ruled. Now one of those generals ruled in Egypt called the Ptolemies. Now a lot of people, especially our brothers and sisters, want to believe that Cleopatra Cleopatra was black. But Cleopatra was not black. She was one of the, the, of the sons of Ptolemy, who was a Greek general in the, general, the Greek army. Excuse me. Can I get something to drink? Then finally you had the last empire that would rule the earth, the Roman Empire. Now we know that the Roman Empire was in existence during Christ's time. As a matter of fact, Christ was killed by the Romans. He was nailed to a cross. The Romans were the only ancient government to use crucifixion as a means of destroying people. And as you can see, they brought that all the way down through history, and they're still carrying out crucifixions in, much, in a little bit nicer way. They just hang you on the tree and just do away with it now. They, they don't nail you up anymore, but the same type of, of uh, responses to our people especially. So, now that you know that we're living in the last days, the times of this, these ten kings, Christ says, let's see, it says, I came near to one of them that stood by and asked him the truth of all this. So he told me and they made me know the interpretation of these things. These great beasts, which are four, are four kings or kingdoms, which shall arise out of the earth. But the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, even forever. And the kingdom and the dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High, whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and all dominions shall serve and obey him. So it's very clear that Christ is going to take this kingdom that has been given to man through Lucifer, the unseen ruler of the earth, and he is going to rule as Lord of Lords, as King of Kings, for 1,000 years upon the earth. And believe it or not, that's coming up very, very soon. Okay. Now, another empire that's worth mentioning, which was not a part of the last four world empires, is the Egyptian empire. Because the Egyptians or the Hamitic nations ruled the earth for much longer than any other race of people. Well, actually no, because the Gentiles have, were given 2,500 years, and that's a little bit longer than the actual uh, Africans rule. But here it depicts some of the images of the African rules, and it's, it's some of the reasons why they fail. 
because the very first commandment was, first of all, hear, O Israel, and that you shall make no graven images of me in the earth or in the heaven. Now, what the Egyptians began to do is to carve out images and idols and use symbols to represent their religions. They worshipped uh, everything, actually. Here is um, the hawk. They worshipped the snake, and it was very prevalent in the, in the hieroglyphics. They even worshipped the pharaohs themselves. Pharaoh was a god, and he was entombed as if he had a total life afterwards. So here are some of the reasons why the nations fell, and this is the reason why this nation will also fall, because as you can see, our nation has taken up a lot of the things about from the Egyptian way of life. And no marvel, because all the empires did the very same thing. The Babylonian Empire, which was way before the Egyptians, they just kind of copied things from the ancient Babylonians. And then all the other nations took something from the nations prior. And what we have is a conglomeration of all of those four beasts on the earth today. This is just another pictorial of the Babylonian Empire. Remember we said that it was of a lion. It had a lion. And of course the lion is the most ferocious beast in the jungle. This also shares with you some of the things that they've unearthed to prove that the Babylonian Empire did in fact exist exactly as the scripture says. And it did, it was taken by the Medo-Persians without a fight. And that's unusual in ancient history. There's always a great battle. But the doors, according to the scripture in Isaiah the... Well, I don't remember the verse, but the, the Most High said that they would not even have to shoot an arrow in Babylon and that the Medes and the Persians would let his people go. So Cyrus was prophesied in the book of Isaiah, and this didn't come about until 539, about 180 years after it was prophesied by Isaiah. And Cyrus, who was your first European, did free our people from the Babylonian captivity, and these were Shemitic people, so we were closer in kin to the Babylonians than, any other, than the Africans, per se. So they freed us from that 70-year captivity. Our people went back into the Holy Land, and then it was the people that returned were the ones that finally produced the Messiah. Moving on. <clears throat> If you all can gather up just a little bit closer on this one, because I'd like to point out some things for you. Now, these are all images and idols. As I told you before, a lot of the things in our society today were taken from these ancient, ancient empires, and the reason they fell is because of these idols and these images. Uh, here is what is called the Mark of the Beast, and this is in Washington, D.C. Right now, today, it's a very prevalent image of a dragon, a beast, and that's exactly what Revelation says this last beast is symbolic of, a dragon. And we know who was called the dragon, Satan, that old serpent, the devil. Now here you have one of the seven wonders of the world, which was in Colossus. Now, the Egyptians, I failed to mention this, but they had this thing about phallics and about, you know, the dead and reproduction and fertility. And they worshipped fertility gods. So the naked body was something that was prevalent then and it is still prevalent in modern Greco-Roman art today. Now, here is something very peculiar. This is in uh, Rottendam, Germany. And there was a celebration. This is a church, as a matter of fact, in Germany. They were celebrating AIDS Day, AIDS Awareness day and these tall symbols here that you saw over in the Egyptian area and this is the Washington Monument they're phallic symbols they represent you know the men's underpart I should say <laughs> now again the, a lot of these were taken from Egypt and placed all over the world we have them in the Vatican and Rome of course this one was built and this phallic symbol in Washington DC is the largest one on the earth today but here this is a church and we still see the great columns like the Egyptians and this was a phallic symbol that on AIDS Awareness Day they placed a condom over this phallic symbol which <laughs> lets you know that they knew that that was a phallic symbol. So very interesting. Now here you have what's known as gargoyles and on the old European churches these are very very prevalent and you need to watch and look for these things. What you will see in Christian churches especially European Christian churches are the pyramid shapes, the great columns, usually some type of steeple which is really just another phallic symbol. Of course here we have our dollar bill 
and you still see ancient Egypt in our dollar bill. You have the pyramid with the all-seeing high of Horus, I rather, of Horus, and of course Horus was an ancient Egyptian god. So it says, in God we trust on our dollar bill, and you have to wonder, what God are they trusting in? It's not my God, because he said, do not make any images and idols of any other gods. And this is the problem with the all-seeing eye in the pyramid. Now over here, you have, let's see, where is that? This is a symbol of Freemasonry. If you recall, the Sphinx was like a lion. Now, what the Europeans have done is place their face on another Sphinx-like object. Had the claws. Mm -hmm. Then you have another phallic symbol. Can this come over anymore? Okay. This is in a Christian cemetery, and of course, you see phallic symbols all over the cemetery today. Just take a look. Here's another church. This one is in. This one is in Europe, in Germany as well. I'm sorry, in England. This was the Abbey in, in England. And of course, you still have lots of the pyramids with the all-seeing eye in the middle, ancient Egyptian um, architecture. Isn't that where the girl had a funeral? This is where, yeah, the Princess Di had it, was, was the Abbey. Uh -huh. Now here is a church in Washington, D.C., and what you have at the entrance of the doors are the sunlights. The ancient Egyptians worshipped the sun. So too do the Christians today. So look for the images in your Christian churches when you walk in. You'll see these things very prevalent today. Here's another example of your phallic symbol or what they call today a steeple. And of course the cross which is also your Egyptian ox which is encased in a pyramid. Here are the columns, the pyramid shape here. So again, it's all over the place. And as we turn here, we have the last empire, which we have the privilege to be living in the fragmented parts of that empire today, and that's the Roman Empire. Uh, some of the heads of Rome, this was Julius Caesar, and I guess I'm going to have to speak louder because I can't move this anymore. Okay. If you all can just move just a little bit. Now, this is Claudius Caesar here, and he was the one that banned all of the Jews from Rome. Now, the Roman Empire was the greatest empire that ruled the earth, but as far as its grandeur, I'm talking about in military power, but as far as the grandeur of this empire, it was nothing like that first head, which was your Babylonian head. It was much more splendid than that. Now, everybody may remember Nero. Nero was a madman, and Nero claimed that our people, or the, what they called the early Christians at that time, were the ones that set Rome on fire, and they killed off many, many of our people. Now, Vespasian was the emperor of Rome in 70 AD when Jerusalem was destroyed. Now, it, they killed off about 1.5 million of our people at that time, and this is when we were sold back down into Africa. We remained in Africa until the 1600s, which is when they began to sell us to the Europeans again to bring us to what they call the New World. Okay, I'm moving forward. Excuse me. I gotta get up. Okay, I'm good. Now here, you have the mythical realms of the gods and heroes, and let me say that these are your pagan gods and heroes. Um, you have Zeus. Zeus was a Greek god that was renamed Jupiter by the Romans. The same gods that the ancient Egyptians had, the same gods that the Babylonians had, they all had the same gods, they just renamed them. So these you may, you may know. Over here, you have Janus. Now, every January 1st, and you, you shoot your gun, and you make these sacrificial dinners, you, you're worshiping that pagan god. That is what is required for Janus every eve of December 31st every year. Now, according to the scriptures, the year will not begin or do not begin until April, which is the springtime. It's when everything begins to grow and bud and bring forth life. So it makes much more sense to begin the year in the time of rehabilitation than in the time of death and cold and darkness. 
So again, the Europeans is what shaped our world and our lives today. When they say change the clock back, we change the clock back. When they say move it forward, we move it forward. We have no choice in the matter. So we're living in the same old Babylon. It's just called by another name. And God said, come out of her, my people. So all we have to do is not worship these pagan gods. Realize that on February 14th, you're dealing with another pagan god of love. Realize that on December 25th, you're dealing with Jupiter or Zeus, who is the king of the gods. It's supposedly his birthday. So you have to understand why they have covered up the real meaning of the celebration of all these gods and to make you think that you're dealing with the holy child of the Most High God, Yeshua the Anointed. Now, this is the first, that first European uh, nation that ruled the earth, the Medes and the Persians, as I mentioned. And these are all things that have been unearthed, and they're proof that what the scripture says existed and happened actually did. Okay, moving forward. Still dealing with the Roman Empire, which again is the empire that we live in today. This is the Ark of Titus, which stands in Rome today, commemorating the victory over our nation. We ceased to be a people in 70 AD. Again, that's when we were dispersed throughout the known earth. Um, I'm sure you all used to watch, and I wonder why I used to hate to see the gladiator pictures and, you know, when the Rome, Romans were in the Colosseums and, you know, the wild beasts were destroying the slaves or the Christians. Well, that was us being destroyed there. They, uh, just as they do today, they love to see us sport. And whether we were killed in the midst of it, it's okay. And that's why you have boxing and football. They're a little bit more, quote unquote, civilized now. Now, this is a picture, and this again has been unearthed, of them, the Romans, carrying off all of our holy things to their temples to be placed in the temples of Zeus and their gods. Here's the menorah. This is Titus, who was the general in 70 AD, that, the Roman general that destroyed our people. And Daniel, the, seventh, the 11th chapter, talks about the destruction of our people by a prince that shall come. The reason he was still a prince is because his father, Vespasian, still ruled at that time. Now, here, this is Justinian. Remember we talked about ten tolls in that Roman Empire? Well, after Rome actually fell in 476 AD, you had ten kings that came up to try to revive the Roman Empire. Justinian was one of those ten kings. Here you have Charlemagne, another of those ten kings. And throughout this period of time, the Pope ruled in Rome, as he does today. Now, here you have a picture of Charlemagne being crowned by the Pope. Now, what they'll tell you today is there's a separation between church and state, but I guarantee you there is no separation. Christianity rules the world. All of our holidays that they make us practice are given by the church. The things that are set aside in the school, this time of year you see your kids bringing home pumpkins and jack-o'-lanterns and uh, you know witches and warlocks to color for their homework, but well, that's because everything is geared around all of these holidays that are set up still by the Roman Empire and all of these pagan and mythical gods. Now as we go from the nations, we're going to return back to our, our focus back on the Hebrew Israelites and what happened to us in the past 400 years. Uh, here's a copy of a picture of a raffle. And these usually appeared in the newspapers daily to share with uh, the people when the ne Negroes would be sold. It's okay. Uh, yeah, please. Now, this raffle shows a mulatto girl named Sarah. And again, we were, as we were brought here, we already had biblical names. Mm -hmm. Sarah and Josiah and Eliza. Now, how do we know all this if we were not the people of the Bible already? And even the Falasha I mentioned to you have biblical names. So these are things we brought with us. They knew exactly that they were bringing the Hebrew children because why? First of all, the Most High said that we would be in a strange land that is not ours and be brought there as captors and, be, and will serve them for 400 years. So the fulfilling of that scripture began to happen in the early 1600s. Now here you have the slave ship. And it's not a very good picture, but what you see is human cargo underneath the decks, packed, and the quarters that they were able to move were so close, they were like sardines in a can. They were not able to get up, so they did everything they had to do right there, chained head to foot together. 
Now, below that, in the middle, you have over in Africa, people marching the slaves up to the West Coast, which is where the slave trade took place. And that's very interesting because people will tell you now, oh, they just went to Africa and they stole Africans and brought them over here. That's not what happened. The Africans participated in commerce of the day. They participated in the slave trade. So we were brought from all of the, con the countries in Africa that we were slaves to. They took us to the West Coast and sold us off in that time period. Wow. Moving on, we have some of the things that are that's happened to our people in this captivity. Here you have a man whose back has been whipped so much that his back looks like a river with many, many tributaries. And then next to that, you have a picture that depicts our captivity here in America against the captivity that we endured in Egypt, Africa. Yeah. And again, we have here a picture of a black man hanging on a tree. Uh, Billie Holiday wrote a song, and she stated, she said, strange fruit hanging on southern trees. So it's, it's worth hearing that, that song. It really is. Over on the very end, you have a woman that at the very at the bottom that's on her knees and the slave master above her and she begged her master to let her keep just one of her children and he beat her and kicked her and the little boy wrote this piece and he said I heard my mother say as she crawled away Lord Jesus Lord Jesus how long shall I suffer this way well thank God not long not long now here we have today's racism uh, in the very the first two corners here the racism of America today and I won't have time to really point to anything but you have the story of the uh, Haitian over in New York where the depiction was good cop bad cop or the devil in a blue suit again at the bottom there you have a picture of the Ku Klux Klan burning the cross again that cross or the tree is something that the Europeans have used as a method to torture so called Negroes the next picture is a picture of Emmett Till you all may remember this brother uh, he was beaten so bad that his mother refused to close the casket because she wanted everybody to see just how terrible his body had been mutilated. And several other pictures of strange fruit hanging on southern trees. Now here you have the Texaco trouble and uh, racism on the internet. And again, this says here, over here in the last part, you can trust your, what is it? You can trust your car to the man who wears the star. And whether the hood is on or off, believe me, the mentality is still there. And on the end there, you have the brother who depicted Christ in a famous uh, play up in New York, I think. And people canceled. They refused to come to see a black Christ. The very same man played a devil, and they had a full house. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Moving right along, here depicts the unseen ruler of this earth, Lucifer, Satan, and the empire that he's built upon the earth through what they call the enlightened ones or the Illuminati. Again, the all-seeing eye of Horus, the snake, very prevalent because of Satan, the devil. These are all his symbols, and they're all over the place in our society today. Now, I told you about that beast that was in Revelations. That beast is a conglomerate of seven heads and ten horns, but there's a woman riding that beast. And that particular beast is also the church, Christianity, who is the great whore that sits upon many waters, as the scripture says. But here it says the waters where the whore sits are peoples, multitudes, nations, and tongues or languages. So again, that is what Christ is going to destroy. Now here you have several images of the Christian church, and one that's very, very cute to me, I thought, it's just hilarious. You have a picture of Mary sitting with the so-called Christ, shooting milk from her breast into a pope's mouth. Now, get that. <laughs> Demonology, I say. Again, pictures of Christ. These are all part of the Christian church images that do not hold up when you look at what the Bible says. The scripture says that the brother was feet was like bronze, hair woolly. So we are getting a very different de depiction than what they have painted for us for 2,000 years. 
And here we ask the question in uh, one of our own magazines, was Jesus black? Well, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And here we talk about the name Jesus. This is on the Internet. This is the Knights of the Ku Klux Klan application for membership. And number two, it says, I believe in Jesus Christ, in parentheses, Yeshua, as the son of God, in parentheses, Yahweh. So again, everybody knows the true name of Yeshua being Jesus and Yahweh. And finally, we're still looking for the real Christianity, the Christianity, the followers of Christ. And that's what we are there. This is full of holes, full of paganism, full of idolatry. And again, followers of Christ were Jews and those who were not of the race of the Jews can come on and be a part of us as long as they kept our ways and followed our God. So, ladies and gentlemen, that concludes our tour for the night. And I'd like to thank you so much for your time. And we will be available later to answer questions. So now they will escort you on out to have some food and refreshments while we get set up for the show. I know you're tired. We're going to get you some seats right away. Thank you very much. All right. Woo. <laughs>